Summer 2002. One year on from leaving school and Bram is playing a gig at a pub in Denton. He's invited his mates from Edgerton Park who will be reuniting for the first time since the GCSE results last August. I'm pretty chuffed actually because I've not, since I've left school I've not really done nothing, not been in contact with anyone so it's like, I've been in contact with Bram but not half of the people who are going to be up in it. It's going to be great seeing Bram again, I can't wait, and Hayley. I'm not particularly enjoying bumping into Sharnings, but you know it's all in the past though so it doesn't matter. These are big stairs, these you know. You swear to God you need your mountain pack to do these stairs, ah oh, boys. Sean Haynes. With three F's in his GCSEs, he left school to work at McDonald's. But they probably won't be in just brushes. No, I don't want you saying that. I want you saying these brushes are the best things ever. But they probably... Shh. They are. Right. <laughs> Hayley Farriker. She went to study sciences at college in the hope of working in forensics or funerals. These are like standard coffins. From what I've seen, I'll probably end up doing something like this. Oh, you know, going into catering for funerals or something. Adele Stanhope. With 10 GCSEs and five of those A grades, she left Edgerton to study A levels. Yeah, we had an argument. So go and sleep with someone else behind my back. You thought you were shut up with Michelle Mitchell. With three A's, three B's and three C's, she planned to go into forensic science. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> Bram Shimin. Music was his passion at school and he went on to study it at college. I've got five eight C's. I'm in college, I'm in college. <laughs> oh, it's so hard because you think how close you were. I've had my leavers book the other day and everyone in it says, we'll keep in touch. I gave the numbers and everything. Yeah, and it's not. It was nice to see everybody, but it wasn't the same as what it used to be at all. It wasn't how it used to be, the friendship. Because when we saw each other in school, we'd, hi, how you doing? We'd get really involved in the conversation. But that night, it was such an effort to think, well, what else can we talk about? You know, it wasn't very laid back. Do you not know what we're talking about? After trying two different colleges, Michelle planned to restart her A-levels in September until she fell pregnant. We've gone completely two different directions. Um, I suppose I, I suppose I'm a bit jealous of, you know, that they can still just go out when they want and do what they want. And I can't and definitely won't be able to soon. There's just so much work to do. And like, I've got 20 exams as well. 20? We'd kind of broke the band of friendship when we moved on to college and stuff like that. And it was kind of like starting all over again, like getting to know everyone and seeing what they'd been up to. It was like you just lost him, like you didn't know him anymore. Sean left his job at McDonald's after three weeks, and other than a few days' work, has been unemployed ever since. I just need a job, man. I need some money. I've never talked to none of them apart from Hayley and Bram. I've talked to Adele a bit and Michelle a bit, but I can't be arsed with them. Despite going their separate ways, Bram and Sean have remained Hello. friends. Hello, love. I'd say we're still as close, but just don't see us like each other as much as we used to. Because when they still go down, we still act the same and stuff, and still have a laugh and whatever. And we might even be a bit closer, I think, I don't know. <laughs> Over the past year, Sean has spent most of his days just hanging out, not doing much. Just woke up, man. Come on. Can I have some money when you get back? And how much do you think you're having? I've got all just enough to do some at sight, please. I'll give you five, and that's it. Nice, right, safe. All right. Safe. What Pearl Harbor again last night? And that's why you've not been sped all night properly. Yeah, because it's a three hour film. Well, why do you need to watch it again when you watch it? Because it's flat. You know the big brother where they split the house in half? We own the, the poor house, mate. <laughs>
Other than a few days in a shop and on a construction site, Sean's had little luck finding work. His parents are becoming frustrated with his lifestyle and lack of money. <laughs> I'm not bothered about getting out of the house. It might be boring, but having a job, boring. It'll be boring doing a job. I'm all I'm bothered about is getting me some money. I'll give you two pounds of this and go to the bank up the green. <laughs> yeah, I want that back next Friday. <laughs> I'm totting all this up, you know, when you get your wages and I'm having keep. <laughs> if it's only a tenny, you've got to learn. You can't live anywhere for nothing. Despite encouragement from his parents, Sean's attempts at job hunting have at times mirrored his efforts at schoolwork. I've got no keys, you monk. Michelle is at Tameside Hospital for her 30 week scan. She's no longer together with the father of her baby. What's your name, Michelle Mitchell. I'm excited because I want to know if it's a boy or a girl. I'm going to find out, but my mum doesn't want me to know. But I'm going to find out anyway. <laughs> always ask me, you know, what do you think it is? I'm like, well, I don't bloody know. I've got a 50% chance of being right if I guess, haven't I? No, I thought, I just guessed, said right, I think it's a boy. <laughs> Probably wrong. See your baby here, Michelle. You can see baby's head and body, can't you? Can you see the heart beating? Yeah. The arm and hand. There's spine there. Down. Michelle's baby is in good health, but the radiologist is having difficulty telling its sex. She says she thinks it's a little girl, but don't take that as gospel. She can't tell properly. Because of the way it's sitting. I offered to do a cartwheel. It wouldn't be long moving, would it? Well, I was a bit nervous, hoping that everything was alright with it, which it was. And then I was just gutted when she couldn't tell what sex it was. Whatever its sex, the baby is due on Michelle's 18th birthday. Bram's life has moved on. He's one of the top students on his course and has formed a band, Blues Fusion, with lads he met at college. First day I met my lead guitarist. And yeah, that was it. Just came in the next day and everyone was just a bit closer and everyone was chatting and stuff. Then like by the end of the week, everyone was just mates. And it was a bit bizarre, like it happened that fast, but it was cool. 
Bram's enjoying his music diploma, and it's this that's made the transition from school to college easier. Leaving school was like, I don't know, it was good when I was there, but now, like, once you've left, you've got a bit more freedom and stuff, and it's like better in college because it's like, did I find it a bit easier? You got deadlines, but it just seems a lot more relaxed because you're mature and everyone else has matured with you. It's college that's given Bram the opportunity to record at a studio in Manchester, where groups like Oasis and the Doves have played. It's the first time the band has recorded together, and they're keen to impress. While we're all doing it, is it like all a live thing? Yeah, it's going to be like a live, as if you're all a playing, gig or yeah. rehearsal or whatever. Oh, that's all right. It's good. Yeah. yeah. I've never done anything like this before. So. Yeah, just keep it natural that's used to you, you know. Yeah. I didn't even know what to expect or anything. Then the guy was asking me some questions, Alex, and I was like, I don't know, mate, I've done this before, you know what I mean? I'm a bit, a bit blind to it all. When we started playing, and you could hear it through your headphones and stuff, we were sort of a bit, wow, because it's a real studio, but a bit, you better not mess up, better not, because we were trying not to sound crap for the technician, because he might just thought we were a bit of a little boy band or whatever. And just end up like that. Singing in a studio is new to Bram, but the lads have got another eight hours to get things right. At Edgerton Park, things are moving on too. Head teacher Mr. Hart is leaving for another school, and Michelle is going to say goodbye. Hey, sir. All right. Looking well. You working? Yeah. What's going on? Where's that? Okay, two direct. And what do you do then? I work in the office with the customers. I bet you're really good at that, aren't you? <laughs> I bet you are. When I walked through the door, it still felt like my school. I was still scared I was going to get in trouble for not having a tie and I'm wearing trainers. I still see Jenna. What's she doing? She's at college, she's doing childcare. Isn't she? Yeah. You're not missing college, the idea of college, then? Nope. No, I, I am, not. but... You can always do it later, can't you? Education, I have absolutely no idea. I want to do my A-levels and everything, I just don't know what's going on with them yet. Uh, I want to go back to work after the baby's born and my mum said that she'll look after it. And I've said that I'll pay her like I would a childminder, but then I know it's with somebody that I trust. Wait, I can't remember how this school works. Don't they have a registration in the morning? I vaguely remember something about a registration. Hello! Hiya! Welcome back! Last summer, Michelle couldn't wait to leave Edgerton, but a year later, her feelings about school have changed. I miss the safety of it. When you're in school, you don't have to worry about what you have to worry about now. Getting a job or being in college or earning money and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about that, you're safe. You don't realise it. You want to be out in the big bad world and you want to have your freedom, but I'd give anything to go back now. But the safe haven of Edgerton is not all Michelle hoped. It's not the same. It's not the same as when I was here. I hated it when I was here. I'd like, give anything to go back now, but it's not the same as school. It's not everyone was so nice when I was in school and now everyone's so cold and strange with me. I still feel like I'll look back and have really great memories, but it's not the same when I see the school anymore. It's not, you know, it, it's not like, oh, that was my school, I had so many great times there. It does, it's not the same. I don't think I'll ever come back then. Using my instincts to keep me alive. Adele hasn't lost touch with the staff from Edgerton Park. Music teacher Alan Walker helps her and friend Sarah with their singing every Sunday. Help me, please help me. Don't know what to do.
despite Adele's high GCSE grades, she's decided she wants a career in performing. The jump from schoolwork to college study has proved hard. At college, I expected it to be, academic-wise, not too challenging because like, I got really good GCSE results, so I thought I'd be able to handle it. But then I went into my chemistry class and I couldn't do it. I got an A in chemistry, but like looking at that, it was hot, awful. It was just basically everything you learned at school, they said forget because it's all lies. And you had to like relearn everything. It was just, it's horrible. I hated it. Eight bars. Yeah, eight bars. Into the verse now. Adele hoped she'd learn about singing at college, but that didn't work out either. Performing arts isn't as much performance as they expected. And because it was performing arts, I thought it was just performing, but it's not. There's a lot of theory to know. Media is not as academic as I thought, which I enjoy. And geology. Well. I just don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just boring. So love comes Disillusioned with some of her college subjects, Adele has turned to Alan for some practical advice. <laughs> you know what it goes there? Uh, when you look into your eyes, it sounds like you look into my ass. It sounded like you were singing. <laughs> just the way you said it was really <laughs> funny. So got to, you've got to make it clear that it's eyes. Right. It just struck me as quite common. Yeah. Yeah. When, 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 when I look into your eyes, you went eyes. And don't go, so love comes round, because we're going to Manchester. Okay. Alan Walker has taught me to perform. Because I've never really done much performance before, apart from singing in a choir when you're just one of the crowd. So Alan Walker's like taught me to stand out and like be the performer, not just singing the song. You've got to like live the song basically. Right, same thing again, please. Remember eyes, make it eyes, eyes. very clearly eyes. eyes. Otherwise I'm looking in your ass. <laughs> That was excellent. My drunk is gone. Bob is for me drunk. Adele has decided to make a pop video to send to record companies. Recording the track with Alan is her first step to stardom. I would like to be famous because it's some. I'd be doing a job that I really want to do, like performing, famous, uh, acting, singing, um, because. It's something that you love to do, and you'd be getting paid to do it at the same time. Would you like me for your show? At Sean's house, there's frustration over his failure to get a job. You're not great job centre today. No, not today. At all. Dad. The kettle's on. He's found your nuts as well. Which one? These nuts. <laughs> Seventeen years, what's the fault with you? I'm sure you're giving it wrong, baby. No, Mr. Dick, because you're bad, ugly. Mm, you're absolutely gorgeous, drop dead, are you? <coughs> no, not for your cheek. Because <laughs> your job in paper, they want models. Do they really? Yeah. What are you telling me for? Well, I don't apply. Not a pawns. Think of the money. I've still got the notes. I have still got the money. Maybe you won't give me your money, give me a fiver. You know, you get a fiver. Not having none. You're sat here now, you could be up going having a look for a job, Sean. I'm not always looking for a job today. At all. Why is that? Because I don't want to. And that's why. Okay. Oh, 
I'm not a total child. I'm not asked. I used to, right? I got up about 12. And come in, go out. Um, come, in, come in at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Shit like that. Because I've got my own keys and that. I just used to stay out and get blitzed. <laughs> I'm coming at about 3 o'clock in the morning. What are you wearing tonight then? I don't know. Oh, don't be coming in. Shush. At half past five, you're going out at half past I'm going out at four. You're tripping. Right, well, don't come in at half past three saying, right, I want the stuff to get you sorted. You've got all day. Get your jeans sorted. Put it over the radiator. I don't even know which one to wear. That many bloody jumpers you have. Make sure that's dry for tonight. Please. Do it. I'm mining this one. I'm going to give you in a minute. Look it. After eight hours in the studio, Bram and his band are listening back to the results of their day's labour. No weird as in jazz and not like that. So rough, where do I? Although Bram's vocals are only a guide, this is the first time the lads have heard what they really sound like as a band. When it comes to gigs, I just don't care to sing. Being in the studio and singing is more nerve-wracking. Because none of the bands really hear my voice properly anyway. So some of them might think I'm totally short. Bram's disappointed, but all is not lost. If there's anything that's not right, just let me know. Right. Is there any chance I can like run over the, the vocals after? Yeah, you will be. Yeah, they just. Yeah, Good so like that the... sounded rough there. So. All the vocals you're doing there is just a guide. Of course. So uh, it's just a. We well, put some knows effects on it as well, so it sounded a bit better. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> as the rest of the band leave for home, there's little time left for Bram to get his vocals right. The pressure is on. Okay. I'd stop you in for that. I'd like to be big and you know, like people in the music because it's the only thing we're good at. So if I'm not going to be big and famous, then I don't have a clue what I'm going to be. The lack of money is getting to Sean, and he's decided to look for vacancies in the local area. I've just seen an ad for a kitchen assistant in the paper. I was just wondering where, wh which area it's in. Not a kitchen assistant. Where's Redland? I, I was, I've just seen it, like, do you know what a job interview thing in the paper? And I was just wondering, like, where, do you know which area it is? The docks in Liverpool? Yeah, let's get a bus down there every day. <laughs> I'm from Ireland. I'd like a job with you. You want to give me a job because I'm a leprechaun? You want to give a leprechaun a job? Voluntary volunteers required to befriend lonely elderly people in Longsight and Garton and Levenshoe. Shit. Yeah. Nah, I finished last year. I'm seven. I'm seventeen this year. Security offices. Chatline staff. 
Yeah, <laughs> there's a job in the paper. All right, that's safe then. That's sick. It's for an adult chat line. That's sick. I feel violated now. But I'm not sure what it acquired. Do you know what I mean? There's too much of in this. One person who has found himself a new job is Edgerton's head teacher, Mr. Hart. He's moving to another school, and ex head girl Sally is going to say goodbye, along with Bram and Natalie. Ow, we don't have strangers in school. <laughs> what are you in for? What are you in for? So you use another one. Come on, let's go and find something to say. <laughs> School's so different to college. And the subjects, you just skim over things at GCSE and then when it gets to A levels you have to like really go into depth and understand them and be able to apply your knowledge, which I can't do. How was your first year then? It looks good. I like it, but I've just got a million exams. That's okay, I've got some more to do as well. Mm -hmm. And, and really I think I just failed my chemistry exam yesterday. Oh, oh well, it was really hard. But there's no smell. <laughs> Even though she got excellent GCSE results, Sally's struggling with some of her college work. She needs good grades to become a doctor. Right, we're going to try and find Mr. Hart. I think he should be down here somewhere. Here's a lot of pressure because I don't really know what else I'd want to do besides medicine. So if I don't get those grades, then I won't have a clue what I want to do. It's really good of you to come in, I much appreciate it. Should you ever be passing through Glossop, and it's the sort of place most people do. <laughs> well, if you think there's ever anything I can do, when you become hugely successful, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. You become a doctor and I feel ill. You still want him to do that? Yeah. How about you? What do you want to do? Dude, I was thinking physio. Really? That would be good. And how about you then, man? Rock star. Rock star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back around the Yeah, it's going well. Got a, a band now. I'm doing gigs. Right, every two weeks or whatever. Yeah. Well, listen, when you become famous, <laughs> when Remember they do it, poor people. <laughs> yeah. And they talk about your school days, saying what a wonderful time you had. Well, oh, best of luck. Why shouldn't you? I mean, you're a talented lad. I thought listen, that when I go back, I just felt like I belonged there and it was the same as always, but it wasn't. I think it was just because I didn't know many people there and even teachers had changed. Bye. Bye. And it was a bit like, it wasn't the same school as the one that I left, even though it was. So what's an ethical issue related to Milgram's studies? Hayley went what's to Ridge Daniers College, South Manchester, to study four AS levels, sociology, chemistry, biology, right. and her favourite subject, well. psychology. I really did want to just go to college and, you know, just do the A-levels and then I'd, be, I'd have them. I was so looking forward to it <laughs> and I couldn't wait and I was so excited. I remember being like, I can't wait to go, it's my first day, you know, and I'll, I'm gonna go see what I'm doing and see who my friends are and stuff. And <laughs> it just didn't quite turn out that way. <laughs> Can you think of any one study that was done on team cohesion? Did triplet do cohesion? Triplet did uh, coaction. <laughs> Started with the same letter. <laughs> wasn't good from the start. College just didn't click with me at all. Didn't enjoy it. Wasn't happy to be at school, but I had my friends. So they, you know, I'd had something to go in for, but for college, there was nothing there. It probably started going wrong because I had so much time off. I always had a cold or the flu. And I did go to the doctors, and he did say it was an anxiety thing, but. I didn't enjoy it at um, college, so he was saying it could be because of that. And because I'm not enjoying it at college, I'd become ill. So I'd have to have time off college, it'd make college worse. And it's like this horrible little cycle that went on. Hayley dropped sociology after only a month. By Christmas, she was told to leave chemistry. With only two subjects left, she's still struggling and is late with her psychology coursework. Head of department Hazel has asked to see her. You have missed yeah. the internal deadline, you've missed the external deadline. Right. So can you yeah. tell me what's been happening? I just couldn't do it at all and every time I did try and do it, um, 
I get really worked up over it, so I thought, right, I'll leave it, and I go back to it. But then time ended up getting really short, and but you got in a panic about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So what state is it in now? It, it's done. Hopefully, you've done it. Yes. Great. Um, no one has not gone through it yet. No one's gone through it. We should just went through the the syllabus needs, you know. Oh, and I'll just have a quick lines, flip yeah, sure. whilst you're filling your form. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hated school because it was too strict and and they bugged you over the work and everything. And at college, I hated it because they didn't bug you over the work. <laughs> and it was very laid back. And because they preferred to treat you like grown-ups and adults, they said, we're not gonna chase you for the coursework, it's off your own back to do it. And which was the problem, I think, because if I would've got chased, I would've hated them to do it, but I would've got it done. Well, I would say you've got a clear pass there. It looks okay. sort of CD-ish to me. Yeah. But yeah. I'm obviously, I've, I've, just, I've just glanced mm -hmm. at it. So I'll send this with a cover letter. Thank you. Explaining that you've gotten a bit of a tizzy. So, <laughs> just, so don't worry. And okay. Uh, let's see you pass. Okie dokie. <laughs> Thank you very Good much. Luck I'm it. so sorry for the stress. <laughs> no problem. All right. Okay. Haley scraped um, through her psychology coursework, but it's the last day of term before the exams, <laughs> okay, and there are much. decisions to be made about Bye. next year. Sean's not got a clue what he wants to be. No. His job hunting's going nowhere. What time is it? Is it dinner time or what? Hey, did I stop? Hey! Sean's decided his best option is to look further afield for work and broaden his search. Grosland's not that far, is it? You get the one nine something down. You just be you. I'll be me, okay. Down, down, down. Into Ardenshaw. Got off in Ardenshaw, right? You get the 347, follow it all, it takes you through Ash. Whoa. Down through Guybridge, round near the sun in. Carry on going down, and then you get off that bus, and you're there at the school. When I left school, I, would have, I wouldn't have accepted any job, but now I'm not asked. That's what a job. Anything. Dental nurse, oh yeah. Collectors wanted in your area. Car and telephone required. I've got a car, it's got no battery. I've got a telephone, but it's an house one. Do I count? Head cook. King's Park Nursery Home, Ashton New Line. Back at Ridge Daniers, Haley's doing some serious thinking about her life at college. The first few months being there, I did make friends, but very bitterly. If I was to go to lunch, I, we couldn't say, right, lunch tomorrow. It'd have to be the, the day that you're having lunch, phoning people up, are hey, you coming to lunch today and stuff. It wasn't a group of friends where you knew where you were all the time. You had your own little place in the college, because we just wandered about mainly. I missed a few days because I was ill, which really did not help at all because everyone else had got to know each other. And you saw everybody forming these groups and it's just like, I don't feel like I'm as happy as these people look, you know. Haley's unhappiness has prompted her to go to see her personal tutor. So what's, what's going on with you in college? Are you still I'm not happy? No, I'm not, but I've sorted everything now. <laughs> right, brilliant. So what have you kind of decided in terms of college? Not going, I'm not coming back. You, you're definitely not coming back? No. <laughs> no. Well, first of all, I'm sorry about that, sweetheart, mm -hmm. because I think you're really smart, and I think that, you know, you can, you can easily do the A-levels, but obviously <laughs> you've been unhappy, mm -hmm. so you feel that, you know, it's... You want to do something else, you know what you want to do? I should be coming in next week for the exams. You, so you are doing yeah, the exams? Yeah, I am so, doing the exams. So what I'll do is I'll mark you as a year one completer. This just means that this will go through at the end of the year, so we know that you're not coming back. Yeah, I want to complete the first year but not come back. Good, I think that's a wise move. <laughs> I couldn't stay at college at all, there's no way. I could have had another year there, and plus I would have had to reset the first year, because of made such a mess of the first year which I would have had to stay for three years at college and the first year was bad enough so I thought I've got to get out. See you so, later. See ya. Yeah. Oh. 
Hayley spends her last few moments in college trying to contact her friends to say goodbye. She intends to sit psychology and biology in the hope she'll get two AS levels. That whole year has just been this little year in my life which can be thrown away because it's, it's, if I shouldn't have gone, I should have, I'm treating this as like I've just left school and now I should be doing this because college just didn't, didn't work so I'm just going to ignore that whole year, <laughs> start again. <laughs> For Michelle, the responsibility of being a parent is greater without the baby's dad. With only eight weeks to go, she's taking good friend Alex shopping to hunt for baby things. Oh, that Winnie the Pooh one's cute. Which one? The Pooh one. one. Oh, that right. says Winnie the Pooh on it. <laughs> Obviously. That one. It's an I've got. It's not for the baby, it's it for me. It's soft, isn't it? Yeah. I want to buy now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely petrified about everything. Whether I'll be a good mum, not being able to go out, just everything. I don't know the first thing about babies. I love kids, but that's when you can hand them back. It's a newborn starter kit. Mm. Nappies and creams and baby baths and baby jokes. Wipes. Wipes. Nappies, hats, cotton wool. For the first few months, I had the worst sickness. And it's not morning sickness, it's all day sickness. That was really, really bad. I was going to bed at like 8 o'clock at night because I was getting tired so early. You can get me a cool heart. My biggest fear was doing it on my own. Well, I'm not doing it on my own because I've still got my mum and dad, you know, and they'll be there for me all the way, but still doing it on my own. Most of my friends have sort of been there, you know, they've said that, you know, they'll always be there, but Alex more than anyone has been. He's been the one that I've been on the phone to when I've been crying my eyes out over something. Well, it is a chewy book. Soft. It means a lot to me having Alex being so supportive and always being there for me. I think about it all the time, constantly. When I'm sitting on a Friday night at 10 o'clock, sitting at home watching TV, knowing that all my friends are out drinking and doing whatever they want, you know, and I know that I can't do that and I'm not going to be able to do that for at least 18 years. Yeah, I really do. It does sadden me. Sadden is the right word because it, re it really upsets me that I can't go and do what I want anymore and that I've, had, I've been forced to grow up so quickly.
This weekend, Hayley's going to a fancy dress party, which Sean is somewhat reluctantly attending. The first hurdle is to find him an outfit. No. No? <laughs> what about an ABBA? An ABBA? Or an Elvis? Go with Elvis! Please, please, please. <laughs> get your hat off and that top and get it on. <laughs> Don't put your hat back on, you need a wig. <laughs> no wig! Never mind. No wig. Oh, what a wig! <laughs> I don't do wigs, me. Can I not wear my bob hat? No, no, you can't wear your bob hat. Oh. Of your mum and drag. <laughs> you gotta go as Elvis. Oh, she's that snap. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Why not? I'm not Elvis. That looks so good. No. Um, You're not used to dressing up, are you? No, no never. Not. This shirt looks like something my grandma would wear. I bet it's something like John Travolta. <gasps> yeah! Oh, suits, man. <laughs> yeah. Is that more like I'm it? I'm going in a suit. You're talking to me? What? <laughs> I think you should go as Elvis. I'm not going as Elvis. But you should go as Elvis. Yeah, he's a... No, he's not. Kind of thing. You see, that could almost be a yeah. James Bond. Yeah. What's yeah, that for? Teddy boys, 50s. Teddy? Yeah. Doesn't that resolve like a big hat and fluffy ears? No. I'd yes. rather go as John Travolta than a Teddy bear boy. Have you got a black one of these? Yeah, but they're more like gangsters. They look more like gangsters. When <laughs> Don't tell like. them that. Please, could I borrow, can I have a try one of them? Of a, a gangster one? Yeah, please. Could he have a hat with one of them? Oh, we can. He may. He, would you prefer a hat, honey? I've got a hat. No, you're not wearing that hat. <laughs> he should have stayed as Elvis. Elvis looks good. He he was Elvis, but no, he had to be as a gangster. He was a little gangster fight. It's, Boys and toys, he wanted a gun, you know. He couldn't have a gun if he was Elvis, I suppose. Elvis was a pont. I had like a dick in that. Oh, I had to wear a wig and it itched. I don't like Elvis, do I? He's a muppet. Let's see. Are you ready for this? Yeah, are you getting in? Right, come out. <laughs> You're talking to me! <laughs> <laughs> I think that looks quite good. Are you going for that one? Yeah, I'm a nip on you. Like that. that. Hayley is taking a gangster to the party instead of Elvis. On the night of the bash, can Bram come to the rescue? Bram's troubles with his hair whilst getting ready have left him shaken, not stirred. He's going as his screen idol. Who are you? James. James Bond. Oh. I'm a gangster. I'm an old fashioned gangster. I'm, I'm worried. Just get ready. Get dressed. Wait, oh, hold on. <laughs> They're my dad's wedding shoes. <laughs> the group set off for the church hall in Levenshume, where the evening is being held. It's to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee, and everyone has been asked to wear a costume related to the period of her reign. Despite not wanting to wear a fancy dress, Sean and Bram are enjoying their new sophisticated look. At first I was like, oh, I don't know if I should go in. But then when I seen Bram in his James Bond suit, I was like, yeah. It was funny. I thought they took it really to heart, you know, because Sean had his hat and he was off on a mission. I'm a gangster and stuff like that. Dead happy. Bram changed his whole hairdo and his clothes and everything. Tried really hard to get ready. So I thought they were really up for, you know, a really big fancy dress night. <laughs> Hayley and Kelly have been line dancing for nearly a year, and despite the lads' complete reluctance to hit the dance floor, after two hours the girls persuade them to try out a few moves.
After some minimal exertion, the lads are hot and sweaty. They want to get out of their costumes. We'd done the fancy dress all night and it was coming to like about two hours left on it. And me and Brown was pissed and we was hot. And when you're pissed and hot and you get frustrated, don't you, and stuff, and you're thinking, oh, I'm bad hot. And I couldn't take my jacket off because I had those gay things. And the pants was high, like, because they didn't fit me and stuff. So we had to get changed because Brown was sweating, I was sweating. It's horrible, man. It's all proven too much for the boys, and Sean's dad's wedding shoes are the final straw. I've got a sore foot, and I feel really, really hot in this and uncomfortable. Can you see the gash in the bottom of my toe? I went out this morning about R7 to see one of my friends, and I put a gash in my toe. Unbeknown to Haley, the lads have eventually decided to go home and get changed. After so much costume planning, the question is how the girls will take the news. I don't normally wear this stuff and I feel proper sick in it, but it's not this, it's that. Although Haley seems to be taking it okay, Kelly is far from pleased. They didn't want to stay in their costumes, they didn't feel comfortable. And I think Bram was following Sean's lead because Bram was fine. And then he suddenly said, well, it's a white suit and if I spill anything over it, then, you know, it's ruined. So then he got all paranoid over that, saying, no, no, I want to take mine off as well. It's not that I'm not, it's not that I'm not happy. I'm very happy because I look like a gangster. It's just that I feel, I feel hot and frustrated in it because I'm, I'm, I'm never in my life wore a, a proper tie or a pants or shoes, do you know, all at once. And I'm, I, I don't know, I just, I feel really, really hot and frustrated in it. And I don't want to ruin the night for everyone, but I feel, I feel hot and stuff. Fifteen minutes later, Sean and Bram returned to the hall to make their peace with the girls. But the girls' responses are mixed. What's the matter? I took off the case spill anything on it. But if you want me to go, I will go. Do you want me to go? I just wanted to get out of there because I know they were my mates and I didn't want to hurt them and I was going to get really, really sort of angry and start shouting. So I just wanted to like, walk away. Whilst Bram and Kelly argue, Sean tries to get his hat from Haley. He's decided to go home with Bram. Give me my hat. Just give me my hat. I will give it you for my... That's it now. Bram's my best mate. I can't let him walk home when he's home. Give me my hat. I just want to put my hat on. After a good chat, Bram and Kelly seem to resolve matters and make it up. But by this time, Sean's temper has risen and he storms out in anger. When I, me, myself, want to go home and get changed out of the suit because I, me, myself, feel sick, my life, I do what I want, myself, feel sick because I don't normally wear that much clothes, I'm too hot, I'm too, there's too many people for me. If I want to go home and get changed, it's my business. It's my business. What it was about, yeah, is that I had a white top, yeah, but none of them knew that because I, I was thinking I was going to spill some on it. None of them knew that I was thinking I was going to spill some on it. So they thought I was just going on to get dressed for no reason, yeah. My life, I live it. It's my life. They've not got to put up the problems I've got to do. They've not got the problems about getting a job. They've not got problems about being blind in one eye. They've got nothing to do with me whatsoever. They might be my friends, so what? They still can't control the way I think. <laughs> The other friends are now back in full party mood, but Sean is still angry. Things have gone too far for him and he feels like an outsider amongst his old school friends. If someone says something which I don't agree with and it's, it's nothing to do with me, I'm not going to stand there and go, fair enough. I live in Orton Green. You go out on a Friday night, you're guaranteed you're going to get in a fight. I live in Orton Green. What do you want me to do? Be nicey-nicey. It's not my nature, be di nature to be nicey-nicey. I'll be the way I act. That's me. And if you don't like me for the way I am, well, you're not a friend then. So back up. Bram understands how I am. I've kicked off with Bram many times. Bram's kicked off with me. We've sorted it out. 
If they don't accept me for the way I am, they're not my mates. Having split from the group, Sean leaves the party to ponder his future and his friendships. Coming up next week... Bram gets his first major gig in Manchester, but there's a hitch. Is it your drummer waiting for and bass player? Yeah. The two most important to start the soundtrack first with. Nat makes some decisions about her career. And Adele and Sarah film a pop video on Landed No Beach. Do you know what you want to do when you leave school? Uh, Criminal forensics. See, I'm going to do my ND in popular music. And I'm going to be a caterer. It's going to be cookering. Cookering. I'm going to the Birmingham to do maths, chemistry, biology and psychology or sociology. I'm even going to become a teacher or an accountant. And I'm going to do kickboxing because I'm rather good at that. I can't be a teacher, I ain't got patience. Like, what are your mama? <laughs> you got my mama? My mama ain't no ho. Yeah. So I'm really happy that I'm going to go on to college and it's going to be something completely different. Oh, what's the next thing? I'm excited about going to college. Oh god, yes, all right. Well, it's very good. Can't wait. And it's not going to be like school at all with your little things running around your feet anymore. It's just going to be really good and I can't wait to go. Back off! You don't want to go broke. Why not get a whole book on you? <laughs> so there's no regrets about leaving school at all. I'm, 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 I'm different from everyone. <laughs> I, I go on a world tour when I'm rich and famous. And I'm a singer. Or I could go, shall we? <laughs> <laughs>